What a joy to have the opportunity to share this morning with each of you. And though we would certainly prefer to be in person, the Word of God is no less powerful through this medium of dissemination. Let's open this morning with a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you that your presence is with us, and we pray that as your word is open, that you would touch each one of our lives and change us to make us more like yourself. And may the Lord Jesus Christ get all the glory, in whose name we pray. Amen. Expectations. Expectations have been defined as a strong belief that something will happen or will be the case in the future. Now, I'm not sure what your expectations were for the year 2020, but it's probably safe to say that things did not happen just as you imagined. And maybe you're like many of us in considering 2021, you're asking, what can I count on? Or is optimism dead? Is it unrealistic for me to make plans for my future? The answer is, well, it depends on where you're looking. I was reading an article in Forbes magazine and they were encouraging readers to not have expectations. Hope? Sure. But expectations? No. In fact, their advice was fourfold. One, they wanted uh, readers to let expectations go. Two, consider giving up resolutions. Three, aim for satisfaction, not maximization. And then finally, they proceeded to encourage the reader to seek counseling. Now, I am not going that route with expectations this morning. In fact, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, we should have expectations. We just need to know how to allow these expectations to be set. Turn to Luke chapter 24, Luke 24, and as the page flips from 2020 to 2021, let me warn you about three particular ways not to set your 2021 expectations and then one way to do it. The background to this passage is that Jesus has just risen from the dead, but few have seen him and even his own followers aren't believing it quite yet. So we have two individuals, one man named Cleopas and the other is unnamed. And they're walking this seven mile journey to a village called Emmaus. They're discouraged, disillusioned, disturbed, and now they're discussing among themselves the things that went on in Jerusalem over the weekend. Just take a minute to notice that they're headed towards this village called Emmaus, and they're headed away from Jerusalem. If you visit Israel, you may or may not go to visit Emmaus, but even if you do, your guide will most likely only say something to the effect of, this is believed to be the area of Emmaus. See, Emmaus is not an established geographical location or place. In other words, it, it, it's little known. It's obscure. But it's here that Jesus meets two individuals on the day of his resurrection. Wow! He meets us where we are at. And now, Jesus joins their journey and he's walking alongside them. But they have no idea it's him. But look at the phrase that's used in this portion leading up to it. In verse 15, it says, Jesus himself drew near. And then look at verse 36, which, um, which we won't get to, but it says, as they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them. And he said to them, peace to you. I love this ad of a pronoun, Jesus himself. See, we see this in Acts chapter 1, verse 11, when the angels at the ascension, they declare, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, or Jesus himself, who was taken up from you into heaven, he will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And what a promise we have at the return of Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 
when it says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command. The Lord himself. With the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. But go back to this conversation that he has with these two individuals. Jesus asks them in verse 17, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? I love their blunt response to Jesus, very raw. They say, are, are, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And then Jesus says, what things? This is where we want to pick up. Look at the summary of the things that was on the mind of these two individuals. Verses 19 through 24, follow along. It says, And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Hmm. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Get that, but him they did not see. Friends, I have to ask you, what mess of things in your world is keeping you from seeing the truth of the matter in God's word? Sometimes before God gives us answers, God will change the questions that we're asking. Let me state that again. Sometimes before God gives us answers or the answers we want, he changes the question that we are asking. You see, in this portion, they started off by asking in verse 18, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that ha have happened there in these days. But by the end of this story, if you kept on reading, you would come to verse 32. And in 32 they ask, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures See, it, it didn't take long for their question to change. And, and I just wonder, do you ever feel like God is out of the loop or that God isn't acting in love in relation to your life? Or perhaps that God somehow is distanced from your situation? They certainly did feel that way. You see, we will miss the miracle in this case, it's the resurrection. We will miss the miracle when we are focused on the mess that we perceive our life to be in. Friends, don't miss this thought because what is, what is it that you're so fixed on, so focused on? See, don't, don't focus on gospel opportunities that might have been, but because of 2020, you missed out. Instead, look at what has God given you today. Maybe you're looking at dreams that might have been if things had happened differently. Instead of asking the Lord, what would he have you do with the time he has given you? What does the story of these two individuals have to do with 2021? Well, we can learn a few practical lessons about how not to set 2021 expectations. The first one that comes out strongly is this, don't let the things that have happened behind you blind you from the truth which is being heralded before you. Notice the usage of this phrase, things, in this passage. It's kind of wild, but look closely. In verse 9, we have these things. Verse 10, these things. Verse 14, these things. Verse uh, 18, the things. Verse 19, what things. 
Verse 21, these things. Verse 25, these things. Or I'm sorry, verse 26, these things. Verse 27, the things. Then go on down to verse 36, these things. And again in verse 48, these things. What a repetition to attract our attention. Because it's interesting how we can think everyone else is blind to what's going on, but we can miss what is happening right in front of us. Notice verses 22 through 24. We're told this, Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. But him they did not see. You see, they were literally looking into the face of Jesus Christ and talking about how others didn't see him. Friends, this is us. We can be so focused on the doom and gloom of our world, talking about uh, the problems swirling around us and the causes of the problems and maybe the people at the root of these problems, when we are staring at the solution and still missing it. Even from churches, we're hearing discouragement, almost as if Jesus hasn't risen. See. They had Jesus in their midst, but they only wanted to talk about those who didn't see him. Are we focused on how others are missing it, what they don't do right, or the things that should change at various societal levels when the reality is that we have Christ we have his spirit, his power, his guidance, his wisdom accompanying us for the journey. See, if we actually realize the truth of the word, we would be rejoicing, hopeful, and clear communicators that in a desperate world, we have an all-sufficient Savior. Let me pause and ask, why do we miss him? They missed him in their mess, but why do we miss him? Well, look at verses 15 and 16. We're told that while they were talking about uh, these things to each other and all the things that happened, Jesus himself drew near. But then in verse 16, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Why did they not recognize him? Maybe he didn't look like they remembered. And maybe even more than just that, they weren't looking for him. You see, you tend to actually find what you're looking for. Consider it like this. What if I told you, Find something in your room or in your auditorium that is red. Well, you'll look up and immediately you'll say, Ah, yes, there's a red object. Oh, there's a red font. Ah, uh, there's a picture with some red in it. You see, things would begin to jump out and draw your attention. And why? Not because they're redder than before, but because you are intentionally looking for what is red. This is so powerful. Look for Christ in the things happening. Look for his hand, his heart, his love in the things that have happened. And on your journey as you walk, you're going to start to see the fingerprints of the Lord. It's not that the things that have happened are so important, but rather the one who walks with you through the things happening. More on that later. So number one, don't let the things that have happened behind you blind you from the truth being heralded before you. Now, number two. Our second warning is, remember when God puts a comma, don't put a period. When God puts a comma, don't put a period. Look at verses 18 and 21. In verse 18, we're told, the things that have happened there in these days. In verse 21, they use the phrase, we had hoped, happened, hoped. What made their hope die? Why did they think that they were past hope? Well, it's interesting. Uh, there's a word that shows up in verses 14 and in verse 21. In 14, it says, 
uh, they talking about it, talking with each other about all these things. And then in verse 21, it tells us, um, besides all this, it is the third day. Now, notice Jesus doesn't say these men were hard of heart. He says they were slow of heart. And one reason is perhaps because they didn't have all the story. They thought they did, but it was only a comma. See, they said all that has happened. But what does Jesus say when they get down to verse 25? He says, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. See, they thought they had all, but he says you need to believe all. Verse 26 goes on. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Verse 27, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. In fact, if you look at their focus on the grave in this chapter, it'll probably astound you. Verse 1, to the tomb. Verse 2, from the tomb. Verse 3, the body of the Lord Jesus. Verse 5, among the dead. Verse 9, from the tomb. Um, let's see, moving on. Verse 12, to the tomb. Verse 19, he was a prophet. Verse 22, at the tomb. Verse 24, to the tomb. See, when you're focused on the grave, you're going to miss the goal. I love that little sung verse of, it is well with my soul. Chances are, you certainly know the hymn. But this verse goes, but Lord, tis for thee. For thy coming we wait. The sky, not the grave, is our goal. O trump of the angel, O voice of the Lord, blessed hope, blessed rest of my soul. You absolutely don't have to like me for this, but it's not right for me to apologize because I'll tell you right now I'm going to keep on doing it. So um, I guess you can say I'm not sorry for it. Um, but I have this thing I do, and that is that when I watch, whether it's a television show series, or if it's a movie, or if I'm reading a book, I like to read the first chapter, watch the first episode, and then what? Yeah, I skip to the last chapter, or watch the last episode of the last season. If it's a movie, I'll go to IMDb, and I'll look at the complete synopsis filled with spoilers, because I want to know the end of the story. See, I don't want the surprise. I want to know what is going to happen. I want to know what's going to happen to major characters that I'm already learning to love. See, but then I can rest. I can rest because I know the characters I love will survive. I can say, you know, it's a dangerous situation they're going into, but I've watched the last episode of the last season and they survive. Why would I want to watch something which is intentionally discouraging? What is the last chapter, though, for us as believers in the Lord Jesus? It's forever with the Lord. This is the hope we have. Sure, the present chapters of our life might be intense and confusing, but the reality is we have a beautiful hope which is before us, and in the meantime, we can rest on promises like Romans 8, 28, where we know all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Yes, 2020 may be confusing. 2021 might be just as confusing. But the reality is we know the future. See, and, and when we make our expectations, we frankly make them too temporal, too man-sized, too small. Because what does Ephesians 3, 20 through 21 say? Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power of at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever amen but there's a third warning this third warning and will be the last one I'll give and it's this you can be right about your position your persuasion your perspective but you can be wrong about the path to that particular prospect let, let me explain hey, if you go back to verse 21 You'll see that they said, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. We had hoped. What? What, what had they hoped? Well, this. That Jesus would redeem Israel. But wait. 
Isn't that exactly what he came to do? To redeem all mankind? To save sinners? To rescue us from bondage? Absolutely. But what about the third day? They said, it is now the third day. Look again at the passage. This is almost humorous. Verse 21 again. Yes, and besides all this, make matters worse. It's now the third day since these things happened. The third day. Not only was it not too late, it was exactly the day that Jesus had promised he would rise again. It was the very moment they were disheartened that really was the very moment they should have been delighted. Do you remember Matthew chapter 16, verse 21? Jesus, speaking to his disciples, said from that time on, he began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed. And then the end of that verse tells us, and on the third day be raised. See, the third day wasn't a reason for heartache. It was a reason for hope. They were right about their facts, but they were wrong in where they were facing. They looked at the circumstances and they deemed things impossible when God's word already promised the journey would go through Gethsemane, Gabbatha, and Golgotha. Do we doubt God not because his word is false, but because he doesn't do things the way that we would. You see, if this was up to us, 2020 would have looked differently. We would have done it without COVID. We would have done it without death all around. We would have done it without sickness. We would have done it without country closures. We would have done it without travel restrictions. We would have done it without struggle. We would have done it without pain. We would have done it without job loss. We would do it without misunderstandings. We would do it without financial difficulty. We would do it without discouragement. But let me ask you, are these things threatening your hope because you doubt God's heart? Because his roadmap simply isn't lining up with the same route that you would have taken? Let's make our expectations for this new year. 2021 based on God's character to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and get it all these things will be added to you Matthew 6 33 this is the reality when our faces are on Christ and on his promises not only will we not be disappointed but the very obstacles that we might deem to be a detour or a distraction or simply devastation, they're actually conduits of God's glory. See, the things discouraging these two weary travelers towards Emmaus were actually the very things that provided salvation for mankind and a relationship eternally with God. Look again at verse 27. It says, In beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Get excited. The very moment you're tempted to doubt God's word will be the very moment you can know that he is doing things differently and far better than you would have ever imagined. See, he is faithful who called you and he will do it. Put your trust in him. First, that he is savior of the world and that he conquered the grave, but also in his character that he loves you. And even when you don't understand his hand at work, you can trust his heart that knows, that cares, and that promises, I will finish what I started. I love how the Lord Jesus uh, took these individuals back to the scriptures rather than taking them to sight what they saw with their own eyes. He took them back to all the prophets had spoken. So, number one, don't let the things that have happened behind you blind you from the truth heralded before you. Two, remember when God puts a comma, don't put a period. Remember verses 18 and 21, what happened and we had hoped. See, when you're focused on the grave, you're going to miss the goal. And the third thing was this. You can be right about your position, persuasion, and even perspective, but 
you can be wrong about the path to that particular prospect. Ultimately, our call is to look at the character of God and invest your life, assets, time, relationships, words, emotions, skills, your very heart into seeking His glory in every area. And then you can be confident of that verse in Romans 8, 28. All things will work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Friends, this is not a time to be discouraged. This is a time to get busy. Jesus is coming soon. But are we going to mope as he literally stares us in the face? Notice what Jesus calls these two individuals in verse 25. He says, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. O foolish ones. Will he call you foolish, just like these two individuals, because you focused on your situation? Or will he call you faithful because you believed the scriptures? The choice is yours. So I would encourage you, up your 2021 expectations as you look at your God. The things around you, <laughs> they're only props for knowing him more and making him known more clearly. Indeed, the circumstances in which you find yourself today are perfectly suited for you to fully glorify God. After all, if our desire is to know him, the situations which he entrusts us with are mere catalysts for that very thing. If I want to know my God as comforter, well, it would only be normal for me to expect him to give me situations in which I need to experience his comfort. If I want to know God as my provider, it would only make sense that there would be situations in which I have need and lack. If I want to know God as my healer, it would make sense that there would be infirmity, illness, malady, sickness in my life. If I want to know God as my salvation, well, there needs to first be a recognition that I'm lost. And one day, if I want to know God as my resurrection, my life, well, the prerequisite to that would be I have to die. See, so often I think I claim I want to know God, but do I want the situations in which to know him? This story is full of these things, these things, these things. And it all seems like a mess. But the reality is in our mess, his miracles occur. In our problems, his provision happens. So turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and and the beautiful reality is the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace let's close in prayer our father we want to say thank you for the lord jesus christ thank you that he is the redeemer not only of israel but of the whole world and thank you that by believing in his name we will have eternal life God, I pray if there is anyone who has yet to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, that today would be the day of salvation. And that they would simply confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that Christ came, gave his life, conquered death as a ransom for us sinners. God, I pray for those of us that know you, that we would not be focused on all the things happening around us, but rather be focused on the one who walks with us. And I pray that we would be confident that he who began a good work will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh God, if I've said anything that doesn't need to be remembered or simply is straight out wrong, that you would allow it to fall from memory. But whatever has been of you, embed it on our hearts that we might be eternally changed. And may the Lord Jesus Christ get all the glory in whose name I pray, amen.